Okay, live stream is up. So uh, let's just let everybody in and we can get going. Can you hear that wine bit? No. Nope. Okay, there's a bit of machinery going off on the farm. Okay, it's not picking it up. Good. Right. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Live. Uh, I've, no, is it week three this morning? I can't remember because it's been such a weird sort of start to the season, what with uh, Sats Week and coronations and bank holidays and all the rest of it. It's uh, it's really sort of thrown my calendar all out of sync, so I'm not quite sure what day of the week it is, but uh, I'm, I'm luckily I seem to have made it on time and in the right place. So, how are you this morning, Pi? I'm in good nick and ready to absolutely rock and roll, um, full of fizz and energy. So all good. And you, David? Yeah, pretty much the same, Pi. Um, gorgeous morning here. Uh, blue skies, sun's out. And uh, yeah, it's, all the signs are good. <laughs> OK, well, let's crack on because um, we're beginning to get further and further into dark whispers. Um, some of you may have already had a chapter or two read to you, and it would be useful for next week, certainly if you'd read, say, or had read to you in class the first um, four or three or four chapters, so you've sort of got the story um, going. So today we're going to be looking at two things, really. One, what equipment would you take with you if you were on the journey, uh, or this exploration of these lands searching for a lost explorer and then some advice that you would give to people who were traveling <clears throat> on their journey so uh, as a little warm-up game we're just going to um, try and think of bits of useful equipment that we would take with us on the sky ship when we're traveling from island to island looking for the lost explorer and i'm going to start off i would take a fire stone now a fire stone is a stone that um is usually quite cold but if you cup it in your hands it will warm up and if you put it on the ground with some twigs and sticks around it and blow on it it will actually burst into flame so you can get a fire going so i, I think a fire stone would be very handy particularly if you came across a really cold island so what are you going to take david um, i'm going to take a pair of power nap glasses um yeah. and these power nap glasses are glasses that you can put on your uh, on your face yeah and they they've got a special um magnetic field within them that makes you go to sleep for 10 hours longer than you actually do so if you have an hour's sleep you'll feel like you've had 10 10 hours well that would be good yeah, so right. you, you can quickly recuperate. All right, I'm going to take with me a harp of enchantment. Now, those harps are actually quite small. They're, they're baby harps. And um, the harp of enchantment allows you, all you've got to do is just play it once. And whoever you are with falls into some sort of deep um, spell. And uh, then you can um, get them to do anything that you would wish. So if you if you are attract, attack, attract, Attacked by a troll, a harp of enchantment would be very good. Oh, David's on. Um, what is he on mute? He's, he's, um, he's muted himself for some reason. There must something must have. Well, it's probably a good thing in in the long run. Mute him. I heard that pie. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone knock at the door and the dog went crazy. So um, I had to just mute temporarily. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to take a, um, a pair of, um, 
jumping slippers. All right. Which, when you put them on, it means you can you can jump extreme heights. Um, for example, you could jump out of the space, uh, out of the um, out of the uh, starship, and land on the ground without injuring yourself. Or more importantly, you can jump from the ground into the um, starship. Uh, great heights. So yeah, that's what I'd take. Okay, I'm going to take a moon map, which is um, just like an ordinary piece of paper, except when the moon is shining on it, you can suddenly see um, the, the map with all the details. So it's quite a, quite a sneaky thing because people wouldn't know that you had the map. Have you got one last one, David? Yeah, I'm going to go with a sun torch. Oh, what's that? Well, the sun torch is um, a, it's powered by the sun. Uh, but it's also as powerful as the sun. So it can be used to guide you. You can use to see things, but it also can be used as a weapon because if you turn it up to its full strength, the heat is unbearable. It'll burn through anything. Okay. And my last one would be the old invisibility cloak, which we know is so useful on journeys. And the invisibility cloak, all you've got to do is put it over you and sort of crouch down and um, no one can see you because you you look exactly like a rock. And um, even if if you're wearing it, even if you get the rock gets, you know, the, you get pushed or anything, they can't see you anyway. So an invisibility cloak would be basic equipment. So what we've got, John, is people make, coming up with ideas for equipment and explaining what the equipment does and why you might take it with you might be worth making a note of some of these because the um, gallery challenge is going to uh, um, involve equipment and, and tools that you might take with you. So, uh, okay, I will get the timer up. So magical equipment that you're going to take on your skyship adventure to find the lost explorer. So uh yeah and a good idea as pi says make a note of them as you go uh so magical equipment four minutes starting now
Okay, that sound signifies the end of the game. So we'll go straight to the Teaching Live website. Uh, across the top, go to today's session uh, under sessions, 9.30 session. And we are on to Padlet activity number one. So I'll open the Padlet activity and I will hand over to Pi. What are we doing this morning, Pi? Okay, well, you've already got some, some ideas about the equipment that you might well take with you. And you're going to use that when you get we get to the gallery uh, section. So now we're moving on to the advice. What advice would you give to somebody who is setting off on some sort of journey or exploration? And they're, remember, they're in a skyship. They're going to be in a skyship. So what I've done here is I've listed um, some things that you might be aware of, but you never should do, but you should always do. So my advice is to beware of flying orcs as they have poisonous fangs. So I've not just said beware of, which means watch out for flying orcs. I've extended it and explained why, as they have poisonous fangs. So that's a, a, a beware of, be very careful of, be cautious of. The next one is a never. Never land beside forests in case trolls hide there during the day. So I've not just said never land by forests, but I've given the reason why in case trolls hide there during the day. I mean, I've got an always, always. So this is something you always should do. Carry a wishing ring in case of danger and you need to make a rapid escape. So a wishing ring, as you know, is one of those rings that you put on, you make a wish and um, it can come true. So um, I've just done another run of three. So we're looking for beware ofs, nevers and always. Beware of caves where dragons may have their lair. You know, a cave might be tempting to go into, particularly if there's a thunderstorm you're trying to hide. But of course, the double-edged sword is there might be a dragon sleeping in there on top of its um, treasure. And I've got a never. Never drink from a waterfall where mermaids swim as you run the risk of falling asleep for a thousand years. And then finally, another always, always thank the wind for carrying your skyship so gracefully in case she turns on you with thunder and lightning. So we're looking for the uh, extension of the ideas, John, explaining why that particular thing matters. And we've got three starters, beware of, never or always. So I think that's fairly straightforward. And we're off. I can see already a two or three, four, five people, everybody getting going. And remember, reread before you publish. And if you publish too quickly, you can do a little bit of editing. So John's going to have a go at doing his, put his name in, name of school. And then he drops down where it says, write something fantastic. So he's gone for always. Always listen. So do them one by one. Write a sentence. Double check, capital letter, full stop. Always listen carefully to Pi. This is very good advice, of course. If you want to improve your writing. But is he <laughs> going to put a full stop? He has. He's reread it. It's OK. So he's submitting. I listen very careful, carefully to you at all times, Pi. I know you do not. <laughs> Okay, so off we go. Never look into the eye of a fire dragon, as you could be killed instantly. I think you need an as in there, Nancy. Or you need a full stop. Always carry a sword with you in case an ogre tries to attack you. That tries, Harry and Aston, uh, um, is IES, that one. <laughs> Henry, always remember to oh, touch your nose. Now. Yes, always remember to touch your nose. That's a, quite a funny one. Um, after dealing with orc skin, um, or you will catch snipple spots. Snipple spots. I like snipple spots. Uh, Carol, uh, have a look at yours because you need to uh, punctuate it and get a capital letter in as well. Alfie from... BPS. Always walk through carefully or you might not come back out. Walk through what, Alfie? You might need to uh, edit that one. Yeah, you could extend that idea. 
um, nicely for us, Alfie. Paint the picture, remember. Isla um, from Bolton Parish. Um, where's it gone? Beware of magical caves with magical goblins. You need to extend your idea. I think you perhaps click submit too soon because you've ended on a comma. Frankie, never sit in a tree on a cliff because there are eagles. I think probably in case there are eagles and you could make them a certain type of eagle, um, Frankie, so you could have storm eagles or something. Uh, uh, always carry a map that tells you where danger is to be found or something like that. Yep. Olive from Bolton Parish. Never rest in a dark cave as it may be a bloodthirsty dragon's lair. Now, if you've got um, a, a dragon's lair is a lair belonging to a dragon. So if it's something that belongs to something else, you need an apostrophe. So it's dragon apostrophe S, Olive. So. Uh, a dragon's lair, a lair belonging to a dragon. Mia, always carry a magic potato bomb in case troll comes after you, in case a troll comes after you. Chuck it and the troll will explode. So where you put that comma, you need a full stop. Lynn? From St. Patrick's, my advice is to beware of gigantic spiders as they have mind control powers. Excellent. You well, could well. knit back and just edit that, Flynn, because you missed the full stop off. Ben, you need a full stop in the middle of yours. Never walk through a forest at night. Someone is always waiting for you, unless you say in case someone is always waiting for you. Now, Margarita, um, you could add to yours a bit. Never walk across the bridge um, as you might get attacked by mysterious, by the mysterious creatures below. The, the bridge of what? So you could have the bridge of doom or something like that. Uh, Nicole from Forest Academy, never sleep in the middle of the forest as you may become a meal for bears. Sound advice that, uh, Nicole? Yeah, I like that one. It's a good idea. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Levin Riley from St. Patrick's. Always uh, carry a self-reviving goat in case you are hungry. Oh, I love that. Um, I think you need a capital A uh, for to start your sentence, Caleb and Riley. But I'd love to know a bit more about a self-reviving goat and how it helps you out if you're hungry. Presumably you eat it and it still revives itself and so you can eat it again multiple times. You've not heard of a self-reviving goat, John? I've not heard of a self-reviving goat, no. What do you need? Bean. Yeah, he needs to get out more. I'm liking Mia's from St. Patrick's. One useful tip is to beware, let's move now, of trolls under bridges and never listen to fairies whispering, follow the wind's call. <laughs> Isla, never touch cheese That's a, on the ground. You can if you want the cheese touch. Now, it's an interesting idea, but it doesn't read quite right. So you'd need to go back on that one. Uh, quite a range of nevers and always and bewares of. And of course, these could all be listed together just to make a simple little list poem. Always carry a secret pencil to mark your locations. That's Alfie's, nice one. Razy, always carry a magical tent with heaters. <laughs> Mia, always carry a magic bottle, which has a button on the side of it. If you run out of water, it will refill if you press the button. Um, you need a uh, full stop in the middle there instead of that co um, comma. So Hamad from Bolton Parish, I'd bring a sword because if there is a kidnapper trying to take you, you can take the sword and then the kidnapper would get scared and run away. So
Never make a volcano angry because it will swallow you in one fell swoop. That's Iris and Iman. I like that. Timothy from uh, Bolton Parish. Always bring a jacket just in case it rains. <laughs> Very sensible advice, that, Hindi. Very sensible mm. advice. Parents love that kind of stuff. Yes, yes. It's a bit like pie in his hat. Yeah. Where like Edsmiss, for always make sure you have an extra parachute just in case something goes wrong. <laughs> yes. Right, we need to move on. So we'll go back to the uh, session page. And uh, David, have we got any audio this morning? We have. I was pleasantly surprised. You know, sometimes I I go through the week and I uh, approve the rest of the uh, padlets and things. And then very occasionally I forget about the audio page. Um, and I did. I forgot about it until yesterday. I went on and there were some lovely, lovely pieces. Um so I've had St. Patrick's on there, I've had uh, Minerva there, um, a few others, Bolton Parish on there as well, but they're, they're all there, worth listening. I say this every time to uh, make sure you listen to them. Um, today I'm going to play one from someone I don't think we've heard from this person before. The go to St. Patrick's, and this is Caleb. Have we heard from Caleb before? I don't think we have, have we? Oh, not sure. No. So I shall, uh, I'll play this and it's uh, instructions for finding a lost, uh, a lost treasure. So finding lost treasure. So here's oh, yeah. Caleb from St. Patrick's. And the text is on there, isn't it? It is, so they can follow it. I've marked it green, so it's a few down. We'll find it. Just... I'll just pause it until you found that, John. There are a lot of very good um, pieces of writing on this one. Um... There are, it's, about, so, it's about three levels down, John, three three blocks down. I noticed Nicola from Monera, How to Find a Lost Explorer. a lot of good, rich with ideas in there. And Habiba, Instructions to Find Loneliness. And Evan, a lot, lot of good stuff. Yeah, I found it. Right, let me just do a share. There we go. Oh, yeah. So I'll play, I'll play this one. Uh, so, Caleb, well done for St. Patrick's. Instructions for finding lost treasure. First, travel to the bone chilling forest of doom and look around for a sacred stone jutting out of the ground. Pause for about 10 seconds to, what, to listen to what the stone tells you. Then, pursue the shark's trail and stop when you reach the crystal caves. Beneath the giant crystal sparkling in the morning sun, there will be a small speaking poplar tree growing in the soil. Ask the tree for advice on your quest and it will tell you what threats may try to stop you. Run from dragons and ignore krakens and steer clear of what lions suggest. Beware of fearsome mountain giants and friendly, frenzied griffins. Scare, scale Jagspear Mountain with the help of a titanium pick, ice axe. Then, abduct a water spirit, search in the caves of Jagspear Mountain until you find an ancient scroll. The scroll will show you where the lost treasure is lurking. <laughs> oh, what I, like. I love the ending of that, where it's lurking. Yeah. Uh, but it's I, like, I, I'm relieved to have got to the end. <laughs> no, well, it's like, a, it's like a mini adventure, that pie. It it's is. Like, it's, it's, it's a great cool. piece of writing. And he's chosen such good ideas and really good adjectives to uh, slightly su surprise me. Um, everything is, yeah, there will be a small speaking poplar tree growing in the soil. Ask yeah. the tree for advice on your quest and it will tell you what threats may try to stop you. Now it uh, reads, and he read it well too. He did, and there was some, some nice uh, internal rhyme going on as well. Run from dragons and ignore krakens. Yeah, the little echoes of sounds. So that yeah. was a really good yeah. one, but a lot of good ones. Um, the Astro Journey I found. Um, I enjoyed Evans. I mentioned that one. That was a cracker. Lily, Layla, a lot of good ones um, this week. Great stuff. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, the um, session page and on to Padlet number two. So it's the same sort of idea, John. 
but it's um, uh, slightly differently done. So we've got starters of where always and never. So when you're writing your advice uh, out for your blog, that will stand you in good stead. And here we've got a slightly different way um, of doing it. So with this one, I've made a list there. Can you see that list, John? Uh, there it is. Of And it's an alphabet list. And that's going to be the big challenge is can you write an alphabet? Now, it may be that you do it in pairs. So um, half of you do the first part of the alphabet and half of you and um, half of you. One of you does the first part of the alphabet and the other one does the second. Or you could do it as a trio and each take a third of the alphabet. So these are different things that I've listed here that might happen or be found or noticed or um, occur on a journey. And as you can see, I've not got anything for X, Y and Z. So the idea is you're going to build up. So if you're doing A, I've got their alleyways, axes, archers, amulets and ambushes, because an ambush might occur. Now, you may think of other things that start with A. So the idea is that um, you're going to move towards, we're going to practice um, bits of advice, and you're going to need one for each letter of the alphabet. Though I do think that would take a long time. took me a long time. I'll read you mine in a short bit. But let's have a look at what I've done. So again, it's advice. Make sure that if you have an axe, you keep the blade sharp. When crossing a bridge, always check underneath in case a troll lives there. Keep a small bag of spare coins in case you need to purchase food. Wear a disguise if you enter any town where you might be wanted or attacked. Do not make friends with an elf as they can be mistrustful. When entering a forest, keep to the pathway in case there are hidden dan dangers in the shadows. And for G, I got two. I got giants and I put goblins in as well. Giants may be friendly, but goblins are always to be avoided. So a bit of Which loosening up on the sentence structure. You, you can see there, I've got a, in, imperatives mainly. Make sure, keep, where. Um, then slightly different things like when da 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 or do not make friend or... And there's another when. So slightly different sentence structures, and you're working from that list. Have you missed a comma in that last sentence, Pi? Giants may be friendly. Should there be a comma there? Uh, no, there doesn't have to be a comma there. Okay. Right. He said very... It's convinced that you convinced me, Pi. Yeah, very convincingly. I say there doesn't have to be a comma. As a basic rule, don't put commas before and or but. Okay. Or actually any conjunction. Right. Though people do. Yes. And that's part of the problem, John. I think I do. I think I do. Maybe I shouldn't. I'll have to. I'll well, have to... It, it, what it does is it, it indicates to the reader that you should make a pause there. And sometimes but you do want a pause, but you do. But in terms of the things like, um, you know, the grammar sats, you wouldn't put a comma before conjunction. Right. OK, uh, I, I stand corrected. That's all right. So we're on to the Padlet now. I can see at least 53 devices, David, on the go there. It's starting. Yeah, Let's give it a minute for people to uh, post on there. So choose a letter of the alphabet. You can see the things that I've listed there. You might think of other things that you'd come across on a journey, other sort of um, threats or problems, things that might happen. And then what advice would you hang around them? When swimming. So um, Lois and Jesse from Patrick's have gone for the when starter. When swimming in the Atlantic Ocean, Comma, make sure a huge pack of orcs isn't lurking towards you and chasing you. <laughs> and Henry's gone from uh, a, a when starter. When drinking goblin broth, love that, Henry, make sure to cover your nose, otherwise it will fall off. It will smell very bad. Yeah. Rose and Kira from BPS, make sure your bow is aimed when crossing the Bridge of Fear. 
and Chloe from Stone make sure that if you have a deadly apple, you keep it preserved for the poison to spread. Elliot and Carmen always carry around a mythical rack ring as when you need shelter or protection, you can throw down a ring and it will create an invisible tent. Nice idea. My and Alfie, you want to, might want to edit yours um, because you've not put in a capital letter or a full stop. Yeah, now I think that's year three coming in there. Yeah. So remember exactly. year three. Good idea. Capital letter and full stop. You know about that. And... Um, well, I can see that Will at BPS has written something to annoy me hugely. And Violet, when writing a story, avoid capital letters. Ha! <laughs> you, are, you are on the naughty chair. <laughs> ah, well done, Mia from St. Patrick's. When trudging across the pathway, always make sure to listen to the forest's call. That's good. I like that. And I like the fact you've got a uh, an apostrophe in Forrest's call. Yeah, it's got a nice tone to it. Mia from FA, Forrest, make sure that your potatoes are ready and secure to shoot at the goblin. So Mia's obviously armed with the deadly potato gun. And Jensen from Forrest, um, do not ignore the traps or you'll trip over a rope trap. Now, I, I kind of like that, but I think... You, You've repeated traps twice there, Jensen. I wonder if you can come up with another word for a trap. A snare, perhaps. Or... Uh, Jude and Izzy, you've got, if you go over a witch hut, shout, you are annoying and run. I like the idea. I think the go over is a bit odd. If you come across, if you find. Um, Caleb and Riley, wear sprinting shoes in case you you... you you're ever. It should be you are ever being chased down an alleyway by a sketchy figure. I love that sketchy figure. Francisco and Angus, I think you could be more precise. Make sure that you have a weapon. What weapon would you recommend there? <laughs> John gives these little, little giggles. Yeah, so I was just reading Lois and Jesse from St. Patrick's. I won't repeat it. Amelia, when entering a dark forest, make sure you have an amulet on, on show, as the dark forest will be kind to you. Like that idea, just check the spelling of forest. I think you've missed a, a letter out there. And Savannah from Forest, always bake, a, always bake cookies with magical dust. Sorry, magical mystery dust to make sure you have enough energy to get through the day. Good idea. Very good advice. And Ben Ben from Forest Academy has also got very good advice. Um, always make sure your potatoes are safe and secure. Yes. <laughs> we chuckle. But I want you to extend that idea, Pi. I, I need, uh, Pi, Ben, uh, why do I need to make sure my potatoes are safe and secure? So have a go at extending that idea make sure your potatoes are safe and secure because now rory's rory's got remember as a starter which is quite a useful um one john remember to bring a pair of odd socks to scare away goblins now i didn't know that so useful advice <laughs> and of course when you do the whole thing um rory you'll want to if, you, if it's going to be a serious one, you want to stick with a serious tone. You can't chuck a funny one into a serious bit of writing. It will look odd. Keep thinking about goblin broth, which is... Omar, when going through a dark alleyway, always make sure you have your sword out. This is the That's the goat person, I think. Huh. And of course, so Rosalie and Alfie from BPS run across a bridge uh, in big boots. 
You don't need a comma in there, you two, but well done. Yeah, I like the uh, the um, alliteration in that. Yes. Faria from Bolton Parish. Well done. You've got a good little sentence in there. Bring an axe. It's an axe if you want to kill. It's a bit nasty, isn't it? Yes. But then on the other hand, if you're attacked by a dragon, you've not got much option. So Lily's got a from J and Pierce. Make sure you carry a spare pair of boots in case the ground swallows your other pair of boots. Will and Violet, you're absolutely right. When fighting a dragon, so a nice little wen starter. Well done. Always use a sharp blade as their skin is very tough. <laughs> uh, make <coughs> Nancy from Kano. Make sure to carry a, a stake when approaching a sleeping tiger. Oh, yes. <laughs> very good. Yes. Um, I think you might need um, Caleb and Riley's sprinting shoes as well. Right, we'll come out of uh, the Padlet. Now, um, we'll have a look. Oh, if we get, look at the, uh, go back to the session page uh, and have a look in the gallery. I can't remember what the gallery challenge was last week. Oh, it was the, wasn't it the insect? The two sides of the insect. Oh, yes. Wow. Some great ones. Yeah. I'm Vanessa from Bolton Parish. That's some, well, in fact, there are some really, really, Bol Bolton Parish have really gone to town on this one. Yeah. Yasmin's is really carefully done. Now, of course, using the, the, if you use chalks, it's easy to get messy. You have to do a lot of sort of blowing the chalk away. Yeah, but that actually can also add the like an effect to it. Yeah. So that one is uh, Cheyenne's. I'm, I'm really some really nice ones there. Mukti has done Mahim, a good one. Aza, Harim, yes, yeah, some very good bold ones coming down. If you look at Ibrahim's, it's interesting this because he added some words on and it's a bit like his imagination. Is that Ibrahim's? Has he got words on his, John? No. No, it was the one by it. Yeah, yeah there it is in the middle. Middle right. Next this, one. Yep. Ah, different. So there's more than one Ibrahim. Inspiration, creation. Hard to read all of them, but he's got this. That interested me, um, that idea of adding words on, that's sort of flowing out of the creature. Yes, no, that's a good idea. I, I, yeah, I thought there was something in that. So today's uh, gallery challenge, Pi. Well, it's, as I said earlier, it's um, slightly different. Oh, we need to go into the teacher's notes. Slightly different to stuff we've done before and i got these two off so if you go to the one above it number five john that's a good example so i got these both off ashley hardy's website which is worth going on um and this is an explorer's toolkit so uh -huh. a little bit difficult to see online actually there we go so all the little items have been drawn so some really nice little drawings and then an explanation of what it is uh, and why it might be useful to you i mean if you go to the next one it's basically the same idea an explorer's kit and some nice careful illustration beautifully drawn binoculars and boots there yes um and then some lists checklists clothing eating and cooking extras so there's a, so that so it's not only is it just a, a list it's an organized list yes categories. using some bullet points in there yeah very good yeah no that's good i like that and i like the way that the writing is done over the drawings as well yes 
an explorer's kit list. But you, you've got you you and you can do that any way you want, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. You could just draw as the first one does is just sort of draw things, but that one's got before you head off on any expedition, you will have to decide what equipment and kit you will need for your journey. So you could do some sort of meaty bits of writing, some lists, some sort of boxes, illustrations, etc. So that's that's a nice one to do during the course of the week. The other one, of course, you could do a little poster about advice for. Um, because the final blogging task is um, to do with advice. So you've got two options there, I think, John. One is to do the Explorer's Toolkit, and the other one would be to do a poster with advice. Or you could mix both. You could have some advice, but also some tools that would be useful. So it's it's fairly open, this one, I think. Yeah, no, that I like I like this one. I, this, this one would appeal to me, because I, I would like to do lots of little little drawings so on to the um the blog challenge well of course this is a mighty blog challenge um and i've called it from the handbook of advice for explorers about to embark that word embark you often it's often used when you're talking about going on a journey embarking on a journey basically it means you're about to leave on a perilous and perilous of course means um, very dangerous on a, on a perilous expedition. So, the, so this is out of this handbook. So apparently, there is a handbook that you can get with full of advice and lists of things that you're going to need, etc. If you're going on a journey. So what I did, John, was I went through the alphabet and I chose out the sorts of things that. Um, you might need in terms of advice. So I'll just read it through. I'll point a few things out as we go along. Avoid alleyways. So that word avoid is quite a good one to get in somewhere. It, it's a bit like the word beware um, or never. Avoid alleyways. For these may be useful as an avenue of escape, but almost invariable, invariable, but, are, but almost invariably I made a mistake in the first sentence. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it's not fair. <laughs> a dark and poorly lit. You know, alleyways often lead to being attacked by hooded vagabonds or wolves. And then I tried an axe out for A. A small axe, preferably made of dwarf metal, will be of use for chopping trees and cleaning paths. Birds. So this is B. I've got three for birds. Uh, three for B. Watch out for robins who will invariably be friendly. However, crows and ravens are generally spies. Eagles may be able to rescue you if caught in a tight corner by orcs. And then a beware of one, beware of swamps, marshlands, quicksand and deserts. No good happens in such places. Bridges are usually manned by bridge elves. Carry some silver coins to use as payment for crossing or they may cast a hex upon you. A hex is like a sort of spell on you. Uh, see, I've got caverns, caves and crystals. Caverns and caves offer shelter. However, goblins often live underground. And of course, dragons hide their treasure deep inside mountains. So that, that thing where you make a statement and then you have however. So a cavern or a cave might be a good idea. However, so you might find some of that useful. Crystals are handy as they may help the owner see into the future. Donkeys seem like a good idea, but can be annoyingly stubborn. Elves may be mischievous, though will provide shelter to those who fight against orcs. Their singing is enchanted. And we've got F, be wary. So be wary is another, it's almost the same as beware. It means exactly the same. Be wary, I suspect John um, got shortened into beware. Be yeah. wary on any ferry. Yeah, be wary on any ferry as the oarsman may try to get you to take over the rowing, and this blunder will leave you chained to the task for a 100 years. Contrary to popular belief, giants are friendly, shy and lonely. Gnomes are best avoided as they are often grumpy. Goblins will tie you up and imprison you underground, best avoided. Harps can cast a spell with one chord. Healing herbs are worth gathering. 
Stopping at islands on a sea journey is essential to take on board fresh water and provisions. However, there will, notice a comma after the however, there will inevitably be some form of enchantment involved. Beware of entering island caves, stepping into pools, and do not get involved with a cyclops as they are tricky. Cyclopses are those big giants that have a one eye in the middle of their forehead. Invisibility cloaks and rings are rare, but will keep you safe in case of danger. Journals, now a journal is another word for a diary, are worth keeping, as in the future you may wish to share with other explorers the details of your adventure. Keep any keys you may find hidden, as others may be searching for them. Ladders may be needed to break into forbidden dwellings, but are difficult to travel with unless you have a strong donkey. <laughs> Poor old donkey. Mist, I got two from M. Mist is generally to be avoided, as this may bring you madness or leave you to stumble unawares to the edge of a cliff. Mountain passes will invariably be snowbound and blocked. A new way round will be needed, and this is where a sturdy donkey may be of use. Sturdy means strong. By this point in your journey, time will not be on your side. Do not cut corners in your haste. And then N, I've got northern newts. Make good companions, as they can exist out of water for long periods of time and are very strong and fast swimmers. Orcs must be avoided, as they are brutal and completely dim-witted. Pirates may well try to capture questers. Now, a quester is somebody who's on a quest, on a journey, and sell them to cruel traders. And we got to P. Princes may be arrogant. Now, arrogant means that they're very full of themselves and think themselves better than everybody else. And tedious, which means boring. Arrogant and tedious, whereas princesses are usually very spirited and prone to ignoring advice. That means they ignore advice very often. They go off and do their own thing. They're a bit headstrong. Q for quicksand, which is deadly. So make sure you never enter marshy, boggy or sandy places without a good map. Rings should be treated with caution. Finding a river is a blessing when traveling, especially when a wooden raft can be constructed or the travelers can strap themselves to empty beer barrels. A small, well-polished shield is handy if faced with a Medusa. Singing and storytelling are useful skills for when the quest becomes tedious. Remember, the quest means the journey. Spiders usually have very strong, sticky webs, so I'd be very wary of those. Avoid standing stones. Those are those big stones that you get at places like um, Stonehenge. And never sleep within the stone circle as they're usually enchanted. Tombs. Now, a tomb is a sort of burial place. Tombs may provide ancient inscriptions that um, provide, oh, I've got two provides in that one, John, necessary knowledge for your onward journey. You'll need to travel in underground passageways lined with skulls and flickering candles. You can see why I said do it in pairs or threes, because you've got, you, you've got to, this is an extensive piece of writing, John. Yes. Uh, towers are the domicile. Now, domicile is a word that means are the home of lonely sages. Now, a sage is a very wise person. John is a sage. Or trapped princesses who dangle their long hair out of top win of top window do not get involved. Whilst trees may attempt to hold you in their branches, once enraged, they will uproot and attack a common enemy. They do not appreciate logging companies, which I thought was funny. Trolls are often found in forests hiding from sunlight. If you remember, if a troll gets sunlight on it, it turns to stone. Usually they're very slow witted and clumsy, so easily defeated in a riddling contest. All unicorns maintain that they are the last of their kind. This is untrue. They are, however, magical. Valleys are always useful because they usually contain a stream or river for drinking water. Be wary, though, as the water may mean that creatures live close by. Getting near the end now. Over the years, wolves have had very bad press. That means that um, people have said a lot of bad things about wolves. Once tamed, they will be faithful to their pack and even defend their sisters and brothers to the death. A wolf companion is ideal on any quest. When I wrote that, John, I was thinking about Michelle Paver's book, um, Wolf Brother, and that series of wonderful books. X-ray, now, it was hard to get um, X, Y, and Z. X-ray eyesight, so you can sort of see into things, is valuable as it means that you can see through walls. A year is about enough for any person to travel. By this time, you will be missing home and need to return. 
Zeppelins are massive airships and should be viewed with caution when sighted. Phew! How about that? Well, that's that's impressive, Pi. So uh, that's <clears throat> quite a an a, a extensive piece of writing there. So I think you think you're quite right. I think you might need to work. I think actually working in pairs or threes uh, in would be quite useful in this task because you know you spotted a couple of errors in your writing there pi yeah. with a couple of re repetitions and if you're working in a pair or a, a, a three you can check each other's writing before submitting it yeah good idea you could pass it round so um yeah that would that would be and you could also do some mini brainstorms so come up with ideas for different things that you might have um against uh the alphabet um, I, you've got my list from Padlet too, but you may well think of other things for different letters. I remember you're going for advice. Well, there's some really good words in in, in there as well that you've uh, things like your, your thesaurus might come in handy to uh, come up with some good words. Yes, the, the language is slightly elevated, isn't it? It's not. Yes. It's not everyday type language, so. You can magpie, of course, some of my language, like the word forbidden, I can see there. Invariably, I can see tedious, I can see. I mean, you could say boring, um, but I've slightly elevated the language. Towers are the domicile. Yes. Uh, lonely yeah. sages instead of towers are the home of lonely wise people. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, now there's loads and loads and loads in there to... Uh get your teeth into <clears throat> and that would be also i think if you were doing a um um an audio of your list um rather than do doing all 26 pick out the 10 best ones and do yep. it as a pair do it one then the other one then the other sort of do it sort of back and forth type idea rather than than uh, one giant list read by one person Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. That might be quite a good idea, a uh, good way of doing it too. Um so that you so that it sounds, you know, keep keeps it interesting for the listener. So that would be that'd be excellent. And uh you could actually you um use this as your basis for your gallery artwork as well. You could you could uh, write it all out neatly and then uh, do your little sketches and drawings of the uh, kit list around it. Absolutely. So you've got a little, you've got a bridge there. You've got a, you know, a little robin or a small axe. Some yeah. of them will be hard to illustrate, but others will be fairly straightforward. Stalls. <laughs> I don't think I'd be very good at drawing a donkey. Um, but heart, no, so harp, can, healing heart, herbs. Yeah. So you could choose out the ones that. Ladders, yeah. So you could there's you could you could turn this into an illustrated list as well. So so you could do all put up, combine the whole thing into one. So you could have an illustrated list, uh, which you do the audio for and present the whole lot all together, uh, which would be would be tremendous. So <laughs> Very good. So there's loads and loads to to dig your teeth into there. If anybody can come up with a whole list of 26, into, X might be tricky to go beyond Pi's X-ray, unless, you, of course, you take a magical xylophone. Um, well, it's one for the dictionary, because that's how I did it as well. Yeah. You see, I went through, I flicked through the dictionary as well. I thought of some ideas easily, but the harder ones, I had to go to a dictionary that's where I got Zeppelin from, which are like massive airships. I thought, well, that'll do me. Well, yes, because that would also fit in with the Skyship Adventure notion as well. Yes. So that's that's quite a good idea. I, I was so. a bit stuck on why, but then I nearly went for a yak. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, a yak would be quite useful because they're sort of very good uh, luggage carriers, I would imagine. Yep. Uh, yak would be. So, OK, so you've got uh, a whole um, raft of ideas there. We'll be really intrigued to see what you come up with on this one. Um, 26, well, at least 26. So you've got more uh, 
uh, on your list of uh, the handbook of, of advice for explorers about to embark on a perilous expedition. So that's your blog challenge for this week. Quite an extended one. Um, you've had a week off, so you <laughs> so Pi is going to get you to do uh, extra work this week. So we'll be back next week for the first time this term back on uh, Monday as per normal. So we will see you next Monday for the uh, next round of Teaching Live. Anything else to report, David? I've just been, <laughs> you've heard me probably clicking in the background, I'm still uh, approving um, Padlets. So that should be done very shortly, but some really good ideas coming through. Keep them coming and uh, make sure you have a look back at them. Righty, -o. well, we'll see you next time for another uh, round of Teaching Live. Bye bye. Yeah, make sure you use some of those good ideas that you had on the Padlets. And next time, it would be handy if you'd read or had read to you the first three chapters, something like that, just so it will help with the task. Um, OK, bye from me. And bye from me. From me. Bye from, yeah, bye from David, 